President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. The floor will again give in to the lead co-lawyers for several parties to continue their closing statement. You may now proceed. Sam Sukkum. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, and good morning, everyone in and around the courtroom. My name is Sam Sukkum, a civil party lawyer from the Legal Aid of Cambodia, and I'd like to continue presenting our closing statements after my colleague Hong Kong Soon just concluded his part. And my presentation will relate to the security centers and execution sites and the reeducation of bad elements and killing of enemies and the targeting of the groups. On the security centers, one of the five policies designed by the CPK was to establish security centers and execution sites. First and foremost, the objective of this policy was to ensure that the principles of the revolution were strictly respected to prevent any opposition in order to ensure continuity of the new ideology which followed the Soviet model. As a result of this revolution, a new society emerged based on collectivism where all social classes were abolished, in particular the oppressive and exploitative classes so that the society had an equal status based on workers and peasants. The third policy designed by the CPK established security centers and execution sites. Two of the main, two of the main objectives of this policy in conjunction with the other four main policies were to implement the socialist revolution in leaps and bounds. First was to eliminate all the oppressive classes so that an equal society was to be created based on the peasants and workers. Two, to re-educate the bad elements and the killing of enemies in order to strengthen the revolutionary stance to search out for enemy, assessed, analyzed, monitored, oppressed, arrested, and smashed. The instructions by the party regarding the treatment toward the targeted enemies started from the outset of the regime. The party had to use the revolutionary violence and gather people to use such violence to respond to any reaction or to the oppressive class or to oppose the, any colonialism or imperialist. The standing committee also confirms that it was necessary to definitely defend the territory and the gains of the revolution at all costs. When they established such a policy, the CPK leaders determined clearly the implementation of such policy through a process, for example, first to identify bad elements, the enemies, and two, specific treatments to be took towards those bad elements or the enemies. Although the word bad elements were used during the Democratic Campuchia, the, in short, it was to identify them clearly and to search out for enemies. Any activities to oppose the state was to pre be prevented and eliminated. A civil party testifies that the party had a view that anyone who interfered in the party's affairs or opposed the party would be considered an enemy. The essential component of such policy was to refashion or to re-educate by elements and to eliminate enemies from within and outside the parties. As stated in Article 10 of the Constitution of the DK, re-education meant the detention at the security centers of the bad elements. A civil party recalls that the interrogation, the detention, torture, and the killing 
of any person who was considered as an enemy was the result of this policy. On the issue of the violations of the code of conduct of the DK for suspecting of being an enemy, anyone who violated the code of conduct would be considered a bad element or an enemy. The DK code of conduct still states that any close relationship between an unmarried man and a woman would be considered immoral, and for that they would be considered enemies. Another point on the issue of the suspicion of the internal enemies, that issue was rife and existed throughout the regime and within the revolutionary movement. Pol Pot did not trust that their people during the Khmer Rouge regime, especially the cadres or heads of various offices. Regarding the 30 March 1976 decision, in order to smash the enemies inside and outside the revolution, was a long and extensive purification process within the party's rank. In the instruction, the DK took an action in the new and old North Zone in early 1976 against Goitrun, and from mid-1976 in the East Zone. The policy had an effect on the people, as stated by a civil party. They suffered a long-term mentality as a result, as a direct result of this policy on the bad elements and the killing of enemies. Many of them face nightmare and they have constant men mental suffering after witnessing the torture and the killing including those of their relatives. On the issue of the participation in the policy by the accused, from April 1975, through various meetings minutes, which indicates that the instruction on the policy and on its implementation was directly relates to all level of authority namely Pol Pot representing the Democratic Kampuchi and the Office 870, the Central Committee, the Standing Committee, the Ministry of Commerce and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In addition, other sources confirmed that at all levels they had to report about the implementation of such policy within its own jurisdiction to the higher level, for instance, to the sector the ministry or the zone. As uh, testified by a civil party, the instruction was given by the party and the order to smash or to re-educate came from Angka. At a lower level, there would be issued instructions to the zone, district or the cooperative. Amongst the senior leaders, Kiyo Sampon and Nunchi, directly and so roughly involved in the establishment and the dissemination of such policies. Kirsten Paul, in his capacity as the acting head of state, induced and appealed for the action against the enemy of the revolution. In various meeting minutes and in a speech, quote, in various revo revolutionary magazine flags, he instructed that the actions had to be carried out at all levels. As a member of the Central Committee from March 1976, he participated in various decision-making meetings and in which, in one of the meetings, the instruction on the smashing of the enemy had to be decided first. In his capacity as the President of the Assembly of Democratic Kampuchi and the Deputy Secretary of the Party, Nun Chi had the authority to make decisions in relation to the policy as uh, confirmed by various meetings minutes on the issue of re-education of bad element and the killing of enemies. The second policy on the treatment of the targeted group, and in this instance on the former Khmer Republic officials, the co-accused confirmed that 
as a system of policy to maintain the socialist revolution, the speaker had to eliminate the targeted groups and those affiliated with the former Khmer Republic by any means necessary. The planning toward the targeted groups of the Khmer Republic officials, including soldiers, civil servants, and their families, became clearer in 1975 with the mass killing at the outset of the Democratic Cambodia regime and continued at least until 6 January 1979. Senior military officers and political leaders of the CPK gave instructions to their subordinates to begin the systematic policy to determine those affiliated with the Khmer Republic after they took control of Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975 and during the forced evacuations of the residents of Phnom Penh. Existence of such policy was confirmed by civil parties and former soldiers and cadres of the CPKs as follows. Policy on the on the determination of bad elements and the killings of the enemies had correlationship with the implementation of eliminating those affiliated with the Khmer Republic. CPK pinpointed those affiliated with the imperialist or had the imperialist tendency who were considered bad elements or enemies of the revolution and the state. They were considered bad elements because and they were mistreat and they were sent for re education, they were imprisoned or smashed. The killing site at Tulputre, which was one of the more than two hundred security centers, and the countless killing sites throughout the regions within the DK and at and at all levels of the leadership of the DK they targeted clearly the CPK in the in the their CPK policies, the former officers of the Khmer Republic. The objective of this policy was to determine the target group of the former Khmer Republic, including soldiers, civil servants, intellectuals and members, in order to create a collective society and to eliminate the distinction in classes, race, religion, and culture. CPK thought of forming a special group, and that special group has to be eliminated, including the soldiers, the police, and the monks. Based on the a revolutionary planning of the CPK, all levels of leadership, all levels of the social classes had to be dissolved and only two classes would emerge, that is the peasant and the workers' classes. The second objective was to purge or to completely eliminate the enemy and the special group within the people. Testimonies from the civil party confirms that those who affiliated with the former Khmer Republic were considered enemies by the Khmer Rus and arrested. The civil party also continued that the Khmer Rus soldiers arrested and tied the former Khmer Rus soldiers before they were shot dead. The third objective of this policy was to purge the former Khmer Republic officials in order to ensure that the CPK would not have any oppositions for the formation of the old regime. Based on the decision uh, in uh, February 1975, the CPK made a public announcement of their plan to eliminate, to execute the former office, senior officers of the Khmer Republic as orals as already testified by the former Khmer Rouge soldiers, people were evacuated from Phnom Penh as it would ease them to purge the enemy, those enemies who were the Lunar soldiers, so that people who left the regime had to be purged as well.
As ordered by the senior leaders of the CPK, the lower soldiers had to implement the policy to identify and to execute the lunar soldiers or members by all means, and that was carried out systematically throughout the country. A statement by the former CPK was that if they find lunar soldiers, they would kill them immediately. This such a broad implementation of the policy indicated that there was an effort to determine clearly by the CPK to trick the civilians to identify themselves voluntarily, whether they affiliated with the former Khmer Republic. During the hearings, former Khmer CPK soldier testified that the Soldiers were ordered to trick those affiliated with the Khmer Republic in order to identify them, and they were promised that all former Khmer Republic officials had to report to the CPK soldiers so that they would be later reintegrated into the new society. Regarding the effect of the policy, the policy had a severe if impact on the victims. They suffered physical, psychological, and economic suffering, and that still continues to this day. Some civil parties feared for their lives during the forced evacuation of Phnom Penh when they realized that the CPK had instituted a policy of targeting and eliminating all people affiliated with the Khmer Republic regime. In relation to the execution site at Tulpu Trey, 20 victims had been recognized as civil parties. These civil parties lost their family members, including fathers, brothers and husbands who were former lunar soldiers who were sent to be executed at Tul Putre. Civil parties described the long-term suffering and the loss as a result of this CPK policy on the targeting of the former soldiers of the Khmer Republic regime. And on the issue of the treatment of all the Khmer Crown people, the CPK targeted the Khmer Crown people for forced evacuation. They were persecuted and eliminated in order to implement and to defend the socialist revolution of the CPK. The CPK indicated that this group was the opposition group, and in their conversation they said they were the remnant of the old society that needs to be cleansed. Khmer Crown people were considered enemies for two reasons. First, the CPK considered them as the former lunar soldiers or affiliated with the Khmer Republic regime. They were arrested by CPK, interrogated and killed. Those were the former Lunar soldiers, senior officers, and the Khmer Crown. Two, the CPK believed that the Khmer Crown, who came from the Mekong Delta, was part of the political group, rest or of the Vietnamese uh, origin. CPK. did not want to, to have any association or any of such political group. For that reason, they painted the Khmer crown as spies, or they were the Khmer bodies with the Vietnamese heads. They stated that the Khmer crown was agents of Vietnam or agents of the CIA. On the implementation of the policy of the CPK toward the Khmer Crown targeted group is the following. 
the first uh, the fourth transfer in the phases one and uh, two, evidence indicates that during the fourth transfer phases one and two, Khmer Crown was targeted based on their identification and other related uh, matters, and the CPK considered them as the enemies. Khmer Crown were considered a separate uh, group as a result of the difficulty in their speaking, in their names, and in their personal biography, and for that reason they were executed. The forced evacuation of the Khmer Crown from the East and from Vietnam. When the CPK had an intensified fighting with Vietnam from 1977, they evacuated the during the third phase of the Khmer Crown people, and the Khmer Crown people will continue to be killed, persecuted as part of their policy to eliminate anyone who was involved with Vietnam. From late 1977 through 1978, CPK relocated uh, Khmer Crown by force from the east, in particular from Prebe and Swaring province along the Vietnamese border to Pusat and Battambong provinces. CPK prohibited religious practice. They destroyed or transformed pagodas into a personal place for consumption and forced the Khmer Rouge males to disrobe. Khmer Crown, the Khmer Rouge, forced the males to relocate themselves to the Vietnamese Khmer Cambodia border in Kirivung district together with 400 other monks from 32 pagodas and they were later forced to disrobe. On the issue of the participation of the accused in this policy, on the 1st of April 1977, the CPK issued a specific order, that is, with the instruction from Office 870, to the Khmer Rouge cadres to arrest the Vietnamese and all the uh, Khmer Krom who spoke Vietnamese or who were born in Vietnam. And in late 1977, the CPK appealed for an, a political study where they invited and targeted the Khmer Krom people in Olympic Stadium in Phnom Penh and they were told that they would keep anyone who agreed to follow on Khmer. During the meeting, Kiu Somporn, who was a minute taker in a secret meeting in mid-1977, where Pol Pot, Nguyen and Son Sen ordered for the purification and the execution of the Secretary of the East Zone, Sao Pem, and many of the military leaders of the CPK, as well as the political cadres in the East Zone. On the issue of the killing of the Vietnamese people, which was based on the theory of the matrilineal descent, the policy of the democratic Cambodia was to eliminate the Vietnamese people based on the theory of matrilineal descent. This policy in showed that they only want to have a homogeneous race within the CPK and eliminating CPK enemies in Prevain province, a mixed marriage policy was in place to eliminate Vietnamese spouses in mixed marriages. One civil party whose family was affected by the policy stated, I observed that if the wife, if the husband was a Vietnamese, the husband would be killed but not the children. This policy was implemented throughout Preveng province. Another civil party testifies that the Khmer Rouge policy was if the Khmer spouse did not kill his or her partner, then the couple would be killed by the Khmer Rouge. Another Khmer civil party said his Vietnamese wife and six children and the father-in-law and mother-in-law were all killed because they were Vietnamese. Vietnamese women 
were the target of sexual rape, as evidenced by the civil party who stated that a uh, Vietnamese virgin woman was sexually raped by the Khmer Rouge. The impact of such policy on the Vietnamese was highlighted by a Vietnamese civil party that they suffered a lot under the Khmer Rouge regime. They harmed as a result of the forced transfer for the Vietnamese people, civil parties faced inhumane conditions and they were deprived of their personal property, property by the Khmer Rouge. And also as a result of the genocide policy, that is the killing of those people based on the matrilineal descent had a great mental suffering and effect and that continued to haunt them. Another civil party who was forced to marry in the 25 to 30 couples testified that they were sorrowed when they saw the Vietnamese people was forced to marry the Khmer people as they had no right to choose the one of their choice. The couples who were married, they did not want to get married, but they had no choice as they were forced to. Vietnamese civil parties in case T as a result of the forced transfer to Vietnam, they lost their personal identity. And their identity cards indicating that they were the Khmer citizen and that was the direct result of this policy. On the treatments toward the religion and other ethnic minorities, the objective and the specific measures on targeting the, the people were established and put into practice during Democratic Kampuchea. On religion and races of other ethnic minorities, of the Cham, of the Buddhist, of the, of the Christians, and of the other minority religious followers, were not allowed to practice because of the instruction that the society based on no religion and had no social classes. Religion was considered reactionary, which would destroy democratic Kampuchea, and for that reason, Cambodian people were prohibited to practice any religion. And in addition, the DK leadership stated that all religions were reactionaries. This policy was in addition to other policies for the implementation of the social revolution in leaps and bounds to build a one society without religion, without class distinction, by eliminating all the ethnic, ethnicity, race, religion, and classes, and other specific cultural groups. In addition, related to the Cham people, measures at various classes and were implemented for the Cham community. From the 1970, there were various confrontations regarding the practice of religions and they were prohibited. When Phnom Penh was liberated in 1975, this policy had already been implemented nationwide. As indicated by a civil party, they made an announcement that no, there would be no more culture and people would not be allowed to abandon the palm trees in order to practice and respect the Buddhist religion. Many Cham civil parties state that under the Khmer Rouge regime there was strict prohibition for the practice of their religion. Those Cham civil parties state that the Islam Islamic pride and the practice of respecting other religions were eliminated. 
After a snake minority was prohibited from practicing their religion, a Jarai civil party stated after the 17th April 1975, the Khmer prohibited people from believing, from, uh, or from praying uh, through their ancestors' souls. From that day onward, Jarai ethnic minority did not pray, did not dare pray through their ancestors' souls. Another Tumpun civil party recalls that the religion and culture was prohibited and they were not prohibited to give food offering to the dead or to kill the buffalo to do so. On the policy toward these targeted groups, it was implemented by the party through the order from the commune or the village chief and the order was relayed and monks were asked to leave from the pagoda and to disrobe. A civil party recalls that after disrobing, my younger brother was asked to be a soldier and he disappeared since. They accused that monks were the leeches or the parasite and monks had to manufacture or play a role in order to build a country. As indicated in 1973, the objective of the classification and the transferring of the Cham people as part of the measure was implemented by the Democratic Kampuchi against the Cham community. A witness, a civil party statement recalls the forced transfer from his village before the victory in Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975. Many Cham civil parties confirmed that Khmer rules strictly implemented the instruction and prohibited the Cham from making prey five times per day and any violation of such prohibition was means to oppose the revolution some people prayed quietly and they were taken and killed. Uh, the civil parties described the measure that the Khmer rules searched in the Cham's houses to find the Koran Bible in order to burn them. They recall that they destroyed their religious practice. They went into the house to search for the Koran and other books and Bibles and they would destroy them all. Civil parties were prohibited from practicing or respecting culture, religion, and traditional clothes of the Cham. They spoke about the prohibition on the speaking of the Cham language during the Khmer Rouge period. Besides the Cham, Tumpun civil parties also recalled that during the Khmer Rouge regime, they were forced to wear black clothes they were not allowed to wear traditional dress. We were not allowed to organize any funeral or traditional marriage during the Khmer Rus in power. Some Charai and Tompun civil parties spoke about the prohibition of the religious practice when they made the application to become civil parties as a result of the elimination of religion and traditional culture, civil parties reported that the systematic arrest of uh, religious leaders, that true leaders of their tribes were caught by Onka for a study session and they disappeared since. The Khmerus destroyed the sacred place, the symbol of religion by way of pagoda or mosque and stupa, and they were turned into other usage. Another civil party caused that Phnom Sra Pagoda became a prison to house those people who were considered enemies. They were tortured, and Buddha statute was considered was destroyed systematically. Another civil party recalled that 
pagodas were destroyed by the Khmer Rouge and Buddha statues were thrown into the river. Many civil parties testified that the jam mosques were destroyed during the Khmer Rouge regime and some of the mosques were turned into warehouses and pig pens. As recalled by a civil party, they burned and destroyed the mosque and turned them into a food warehouse. Other elements of the policies toward the Jam people were, was that they were forced to eat pork. If anyone refused, they would be considered to oppose the Khmer rules and they would face the execution. A civil party stated that the Jam identity were known and they would be killed regardless whether they were male, female or children. A clear policy was established by the DK leadership to target the Jam because they were part of a specific ethnic group. The political the policy characteristics were established because the Khmer Rouge leader wanted to separate them and to separate the Jam community the Jam community in order to create a collective society with no religion, which was based solely on the revolution. The impact of such a campaign for the the segregation and the elimination of Cham was part of the destruction of the Cham people. In relation to the practice of the religion in the Khmer Rouge regime, internal document of the Democratic Kampuji referred to the elimination of religion and the elimination of the monks, as 85 to 90 percent of the monks were forced to abandon the monk the monkhood and to leave their pagodas where the latter were destroyed. Some Jarai and Tampoon civil parties spoke about the suffering they received which had an impact on their mentality as they were prohibited from respecting the salt of the trees. Tampoon and Jarai people still talk about the current suffering due to the loss of their religious leaders under the Khmer Rouge regime. After the fall of the Khmer Rouge regime, it was difficult for ethnic minorities to study about their religious and religions and belief only with the assistance of the older people. The systematic and widespread implementation of the policy to prohibit and oppress all kinds of religions which were established clearly, state, clearly indicates that they were ordered by the upper level as indicated in the 15 telegrams where they report about the policies toward the Jam people, in particular that they had to be relocated based on the understanding. The entire destruction of the Cham community in Kampong Cham province clearly indicated that there was a clear plan put forward by the upper echelon of the Democratic Kampuchea. The plan was coordinated by the senior leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea, reported to the party center, namely Kai Pok, the secretary of the central zone in 1977, and that was during the purge of the cadres of the East Zone. East Zone. And Kai Pok became the commander of the East Zone sector and the commander of the military in the North Zone. As a member of the Central Committee, Kai Pok was in charge of Office 870, in particular Nung Chi and Son Sen, who would report on the fighting in the battlefield. In relation to Buddhism, the internal document of the CPK indicated that 
abandonment of the religion was not a choice, but it was the instruction by Onka that the, the practice of Sai religion was prohibited based on the policy that to dig the grass, the roots need to be dug out as well, and the monks had to be it had to leave the pagoda to work in the rice fields. This policy was to eliminate the special group in the society, and it was coordinated by the speaker leaderships when religion was declared as part of the op oppressive class and the expo exploitative class. As confirmed by the accused, some strict measures were decided for the reform of the economy the necessity of a widespread reform was to dig or to seek out those activities which were non productive and to encourage those who were part of the production. The accused announced that as a result, the struggle had to be maintained in order to to meet the objective of the production to the maximum. Mr. President, I conclude my part, and I'd like to cede the floor to my colleague, D. Srina. Thank you. <coughs> President, thank you. D. Srina, you may proceed. My respect to Mr. President, Your Honours, parties to the proceeding, and members of the public. My name is T. Srina. I am one of the civil party lawyers in K002. Following on from my colleague, I am going to raise three points. One, the factual elements of the force movement phase one, two, the suffering the civil parties and the victims have sustained since the uh, first wave of evacuation on the, from the 17th of April 1975 and throughout the Democratic Cambodia period. And finally, I am going to make uh, an overall uh, observation on certain points in response to the written brief of the Defense councils. In order to save time, I am not going to uh, touch upon the points uh, that I have already submitted in the written brief submitted to your chamber earlier. I would like to provide additional comments to the written brief so that the chamber have the additional basis uh, to uh, consider rendering justice to the civil party as well as the victims of the democratic Cambodia regime. One, the specific facts concerning force movement phase one. First, I would like to bring up the uh, statements concerning the participation of the civil parties and, the, and their relation uh, with this fact. As your owners and members of the uh, proceedings have uh, already been aware of, the facts of uh, recognized in case 002 slash 01 covers the uh, force movement phase one, force movement phase two, and the execution of people at Tulpo Trey. And these um, were uh, severed uh, from the uh, temporal jurisdiction uh, from the 17th of April 1975 to the 6th of January 1979. For the facts concerning uh, force uh, transfer or movement phase two and the execution of people at Tulpo Trey will be addressed by my uh, colleague after my presentation. Your Honours, through various um, evidence, particularly evidence provided by the civil parties and witnesses, 
uh, who have come across uh, this regime provides very clearly that the uh, forced transfer in phase one is, was not confined to the uh, evacuation of Phnom Penh uh, city, but it also encompassed the evacuation from other provin provincial towns throughout Cambodia, namely Kompong Saum, Bat Dambong, Kompong Spu, Po Sat, Kandal, Kompot, Swai Riang, Kompong Cham, Takeo, and the uh, subsequent uh, transfer of people from one location to another location, starting from the 17th of April 1975 to uh, sometime before September 1975. I would like to emphasize that this uh, seven, several case uh, is of an effective um, means uh, to expedite the proceeding as well as to uh, provide answers uh, in an expeditious manner to the civil parties and the victims throughout Cambodia who have been waiting uh, for justice uh, for a long time. The civil parties and the victims alike insist uh, that the uh, court uh, punish the leaders of the democratic Cambodia, namely Nguyen Chi and Kheo Sum Pon. To today's closing uh, statement in court, uh, both co-accused have spoken very little on what they have ordered, participated, knew, heard, saw, and they denied the, uh, their knowledge of the crimes that they have uh, committed. Due to the trust to this tribunal, uh, as well as their participation in the capacity as civil party uh, thus far, 32 civil party have come to testify uh, before your chamber. They described the specific location, time, and actual aspect on the ground, which the uh, democratic Cambodia troops uh, forced them and other victims across Cambodia to leave the city and other provincial town across Cambodia. In order to achieve their plan of evacuating people, the Khmer Rouge, namely the Khmer Rouge uh, troop, employed various means including a threat of life, threat at gunpoint, search uh, and arrest of soldiers and former officials of the Khmer Republic government, Khmer Crown uh, people, and they also uh, classify a civilian as the new civilian, or commonly known as the 17 April people, and they also uh, place them under a form of deferential treatment when they reach the destination. The civil party uh, describes very uh, vividly the condition before, during, and after the evacuation and the time when they uh, reached the destination. And the testimony were <coughs> provided very clearly by individuals based on their age, sex, uh, race, and group, and places where they worked and the evidence provided by the civil parties amount to considerable um, number, and these provide direct evidence and circum uh, circum circumstantial evidence which uh, corroborate one another as well as the uh, other evidence and testimony provided by other witnesses concerning these facts of uh, forced transfer. It is worth recalling that before the 17th of April 1975, the Khmer Republic government, commonly known as uh, Lonnol government, was the uh, subject or target of the uh, overthrow of the democratic Cambodia led by the Communist Party of Cambodia. Cambodian people under the Lonnol regime at that time wanted to live in peace solidarity, freedom, and enjoy making their livelihood 
uh, according to their ability. The shortcoming, some shortcoming of the government of Khmer Republic at that time induced the Khmer Rouge uh, to lure the Cambodian people who have suffered from certain social injustice to join their revolutionary forces. And this uh, situation gained momentum over time. As a result, the Khmer Rouge soldier advanced very quickly to eventually conquer uh, the Lonnol government, and it came to power uh, officially on the 17th of April 1975. This victory was characterized by their uh, control of certain important cities, including Phnom Penh uh, city, and they uh, finally uh, were in power to control the uh, state authority as well as the fate of Cambodian people. At that time in Phnom Penh, some, more than two million people were residing and they started uh, to be transferred. When they came to power, it was not in accordance with the will of the people, but they came to power by force, by revenge, and they killed Lonnol soldier and the former official of soldier as well as civil uh, as well as a civilian and the uh, Khmer Crown in the course of evacuation, particularly when they were uh, placed in the cooperative work site and security offices across the country. Next, I am going to um, touch upon the. Uh, suffering that the civil parties and victims have sustained uh, from the time when they were evacuated uh, from the 17th of April 1975 and throughout the Democratic Cambodia period. I would like to um, inform your honors that there have been various uh, testimony uh, by the civil parties as well as the victims who stated very clearly the impacts and suffering that they have sustained uh, in the course of the evacuation phase one and other phases. And nobody would ever understand their condition and situation better than they themselves. They were all um, traumatized. They suffered directly from this forced transfer. Numerous testimony indicated uh, the uh, trauma that people have uh, sustained uh, due to the uh, vivid uh, scenes of uh, people being killed, uh, civilian soldier, uh, monks, uh, the elderly, women, children, and other unidentified men and women who were killed along the street and uh, they encounter these scenes, these horrifying scenes that they have never seen along the way uh, when they were being evacuated uh, to the destination. And other witnesses and civil parties also uh, testify on the uh, location where they, uh, where they saw um, dead bodies. It was not a place where the dead body were uh, actually uh, put, but they simply saw them along the way, particularly the uh, dead body as a result of um, the execution. Uh, and they saw them all when they were being evacuated. And as for other witnesses and civil party, they also mentioned uh, that the evacuation from Phnom Penh and other provincial town by the Khmer Rouge, they conducted a search and they arrested people instantly when they were being evacuated if they ever suspected anybody of being the uh, soldier or official of the uh, previous regime. As a result, the fate of those official or people who were implicated being the official of Lonnol regime uh, disappeared and they never returned. The condition uh, did not improve, but it deteriorated all the time until they reached the destination. Uh, 
Lonel soldier and the former official of this administration were searched and targeted and they were separated and segregated and from day by day they disappear and they never return. They left behind many orphans, win widows until today. And at the same time, civil parties and victims who have separated from their family, husband separated from wife, and wife separated from husband, and many orphans live without any homes, and some of them uh, suffered from many diseases, including uh, chronic disease or post-traumatic disorder, as well as other social physio psycho diseases to date. The barbarous act led by the leaders of the Khmer Rouge have left with the Cambodian people a lot of suffering psychologically and physically. And following their admission as the uh, civil party, they have already become the uh, hopeless people. Some of them are very poor now, and some are very hopeless. Some suffer from psychological and social pressure, and some have fallen sick, and they are traumatized, so traumatized that they cannot do anything for their living. And I believe that your honors must have already heard the testimony, particularly uh, the uh, great suffering that they have endured. And I believe that you will have the basis uh, for the consideration on the suffering that the uh, civil parties and victims across Cambodia have suffered. And as the physio-psychologist uh, Chem Sutira uh, concluded that uh, there was prevalence of uh, post-traumatic disorder with the victims as the result of the forced evacuation during the uh, Democratic Cambodia period. Uh, he came to testify before the chamber uh, on the 30th of, of June 2013. Finally, I would like to make my final observation on the uh, submission by the uh, defense team in their written brief. I will touch upon a number of points uh, based on the, uh, on the basis of the uh, force transfer phase one. One, the shortage of food uh, and security between April 1975, and this was used as the ground for the evacuation. I consider this as an utterly unreasonable uh, point. I would like to respond to the defense uh, team that the issue of food shortage, the lack of assistance, as well as the security reason uh, between April 1975 uh, and uh, throughout this period uh, and in the early days of this uh, regime was not the reason that is not uh, plausible. I would like to um, respond to the defense uh, team that uh, if the, even though the situation in Phnom Penh prior to the 17th of April 1975 was uh, partly insecure in certain places as a result of the uh, preceding war, as well as the ongoing uh, shelling uh, along the suburb of Phnom Penh, but the livelihood of the people was indeed better than uh, that uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime, and particularly following the evacuation of people out of Phnom Penh and other provincial towns. The livelihood of people, for example, when they, uh, they could sell things, they could uh, perform their job uh, every day up until the 17th of April 1975. In addition, the condition of food uh, for people were uh, supplied on a regular uh, basis and people still had uh, sufficient uh, food uh, to eat. On this point, I would like to um, bring up one point uh, from the prosecutor in their written uh, brief in case 002 slash 01. 
in paragraph 257, who cited the uh, testimony of Sidney Shanberg, an American journalist who denied the issue of food shortage in Cambodia, uh, which was asserted by Kiel Sampon Nguyen Chia and Il Sari that the evacuation of uh, Phnom Penh was, uh, and other provincial town was uh, for necessity reason, particularly because of the shortage of food. And Mr. Schenberg said that that was not the case. Mr. Schenberg uh, emphasized that, in, in fact, the Khmer Rouge uh, prevented and, uh, the uh, transport of uh, food into Phnom Penh, and particularly they also shell and attack by uh, rocket uh, on the uh, ship transporting uh, rice and food stuff along Mekong River. In the introductory submission, paragraph 14, it also uh, indicates uh, the result or the consequences of the evacuation of, Phnom, uh, of people from Phnom Penh and the uh, denial of uh, international assistance uh, from the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, government. The assumption that the uh, lack of food uh, was the reason for the evacuation uh, was not plausible, and if it was the case, uh, this evacuation should not have been done uh, in an emergent uh, and abrupt uh, situation, and coercive measure would not have been uh, employed, because after all, if people had to cultivate rice, and uh, they would not uh, spend less than a few months uh, to uh, produce any crops. For this reason, I believe that there was only one reason that the Democratic Kampuchea uh, had at that time was to evacuate uh, people out of Phnom Penh City at whatever cost. Finally, it is observed that uh, people, uh, some two million people uh, who were evacuated out of Phnom Penh, uh, regardless of their age and their condition, even though uh, lady, uh, pregnant ladies or the elderly or people who are being treated in the hospital, the uh, surrendered uh, soldier uh, were all required to leave uh, the city no longer than one week uh, period. So this was a uh, measure that was uh, imposed uh, on the people and they mobilized uh, means and other uh, pressure. For example, they resort uh, to uh, threat them at gunpoint uh, to leave uh, the city and those who resist uh, leaving uh, would be even killed instantly. If the Khmer Rouge leader had the intention to protect the people from starvation due to the lack of food, as they reiterated, I believe that following their victory, uh, they would have done or prepared something for the people when they were evacuated, but actually they did not do that. On the contrary, the Khmer Rouge uh, leader did not address the issue of lack of food when people were evacuated to the countryside. It was completely contradictory to what uh, they said, and it was purely their pretext for evacuation. Uh, the testimony uh, confirmed uh, that the issue of lack of uh, food uh, after the evacuation have uh, led to uh, massive deaths of people uh, because they lack food, uh, lack of access to uh, vitamin, and they suffered from diseases and overworked. Many people died um, uh, after, during and after the course of ev evacuation, and people uh, were given only one can of rice um, for four to ten people per meal. The point raised by the uh, Defense Council, which I believe that is not correct either, is the issue of uh, security. 
And they said that uh, there was a looming bombardment by America. They uh, publicized this uh, information. They said that this uh, bombardment would recur uh, following the Khmer Rouge uh, came to Phnom Penh. Witness who was in the condition um, of evacuation were all threat to leave Phnom Penh because they used uh, this message, the message that America would bombard the city. The, their, the people in their neighborhood, their friends, uh, their relatives and colleagues also receive exactly the same message. No testimony ever mentioned uh, that there was indeed a bombardment by American uh, soldiers again except the uh, gun uh, fire by the Khmer Rouge uh, troops uh, to force people to leave the city and the execution along the street. Based on military uh, techniques, the leaders of the Khmer Rouge as well as the commanders of the uh, troops uh, must have uh, known uh, very well whether or not there was um, the likelihood of American bombardment. In this case, the fact that they said uh, they had to evacuate the people immediately following uh, for fear of uh, bombardment, the Khmer Rouge soldier merely mentioned that uh, there might be uh, bombardment or they say it is likely that the, uh, America uh, would, would bomb uh, the city. This was the language of uncertainty. But if you look at the various testimony provided by the uh, witnesses as well as the civil party was that the, the soldiers of Democratic Kampuchea used invented message in order to uh, evacuate people. Uh, and I believe that uh, this message uh, would not be able to uh, be sent uh, to many places in, a, in the same manner without the order from the uh, commander in the military as well as the decision makers at the leadership level. Your Honours, as I mentioned earlier, the creation of a situation of panic is, was one of the effective means to evacuate people out of Phnom Penh. And this was contradictory. Uh, this, this was different from what the defense team for Nguyen Chia, that uh, the bombardment, the looming bombardment of Phnom Penh was a reasonable uh, ground for force movement. But in order to respond to this uh, issue, let us uh, put it in the context. Uh, we can ask whether or not there was actually the bombardment of, uh, on, on the city, and was it the practical reason for evacuation? Why did the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, leaders use this message uh, to evacuate people? Well, as a matter of fact, if we look at the historical uh, aspect of this bombardment by American troops in the rural area of Cambodia, it did leave behind the uh, handicaps displaced many people up until 1973 when the American, when the American Congress voted uh, to cease bombardment. According to the um, report of the Pentagon of the United States, the bombardment uh, in Cambodian uh, led to, uh, to 130,000 uh, refugees And up until 1970, 60% of the refugee, uh, no, 60% of the refugee um, by 1971 recognized that the bombardment was the reason for the evacuation. <coughs> and this bombardment uh, left with people the trauma 
up until the 17th of April 1975, and the evacuation uh, took place. As Mr. Ben Kiernan uh, recorded in his book uh, that uh, on entitled Pol Pot Regime, he said uh, that the Communist Party of Cambodia uh, used uh, the pretext of American bombardment as a propaganda uh, and a pretext uh, to implement it radic uh, radical and barbarous policy. Now I would like to uh, invite the chamber uh, to consider on this uh, fact, this uh, a pretext of uh, American bombardment. I believe that that was a strategy uh, to uh, force people to leave the city in accordance with their plan, uh, with their plan. In short, uh, it was a very unfortunate uh, message and a propaganda that the Khmer Rouge employed, uh, even though they knew for sure that the impact was uh, far-reaching. And they, <coughs> and they wanted to use this message in order to uh, inflict fear uh, on the civil, uh, civilian as well as the Lonol soldier uh, who believed that the Lonol government would no longer be able to protect them. For this reason, the defense uh, teams uh, did not tell the court what actually happened uh, on the ground at that time, and the reason for the evacuation was indeed floor. In the contrary, uh, during the long uh, during this uh, Khmer Rouge uh, period, uh, according to Ben Kiernan, uh, the official of Lonnal and the civil servant, a civil civilian, up to 10,000 uh, were killed in the course of the evacuation out of Phnom Penh. Now, I would like to address one point of uh, raised by the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia, who uh, brought up one point uh, from the testimony of Mr. Francois Bissot, who said that uh, he did not see uh, the uh, dead body. Uh, and then later on, he said that he saw uh, five to six uh, dead body. That was not uh, correct, because what he said was uh, only uh, rep presentation of the place where he uh, went to. He probably went to only a small uh, section of Phnom Penh city at the time, and he based uh, his uh, testimony on his own experience uh, of his limited uh, travel in the city. Now, the, I would like to uh, discuss the discriminate uh, treatment of the new people, the formal, former Lonol soldier, an official and the Khmer Crown. There was a policy of separa separation, segregation, and labeling of people as old people and new people, and they uh, continued to target specific group of people, and those people were the subject of the execution, mistreatment by the Khmer Rouge um, troops. This uh, treatment uh, was indeed uh, an inflict of fears on the people. Of course, those who have uh, been in this situation, particularly when they were forced to work in the cooperatives, uh, they agreed with each other that uh, people were separated. And the goal was very clear. They wanted to reduce the members of groups on different pretexts, which I will describe in the following. One of the arguments is that uh, they started to segregate members of the uh, group, and members of the group, uh, day by day, uh, lose uh, its member. And they uh, said uh, that they would send members of the team uh, to work uh, in other places, and others die of diseases or starvation. Uh, some of the civil party uh, testified before the chamber that uh, they only provided one can of rice uh, for four to ten people per meal once they uh, fell sick uh, due to food shortage or 
uh, vitamin, they would be given only a uh, rapid tongue uh, tablet, and most of them die uh, due to uh, lack of access to proper medicine. No witness stands up to object this reality. One more point that the defense team also raised. That was the degrading treatment of the new people and the Khmer Krom. They said uh, that the uh, new people could not adapt themselves to new life such as constructing and live, constructing houses and living in the cooperatives and working in the rice paddy. This was the point that the civil parties and other victims find it unacceptable uh, because civil party and um, victims uh, who were the direct victims of this situation, they testified in their own language. They made comparison of the suffering that they uh, sustain uh, and the harsh condition uh, that they uh, were imposed uh, at that time was uh, of degrading nature. Now, the civil parties and the victims uh, raised the issue of poor health condition following their travel of hundreds of kilometers before they reached the destination. They had to adapt themselves to new livelihood. They had to construct uh, their own uh, shelter, and they were forced uh, to work in the rice field uh, and this, of course, was the situation that the new people was not used to, unlike the base people who got used to working in the rice field and the place where they resided. The second issue is the uh, construction of a shelter, working in the field and looking after the kids uh, are normally the work that are uh, under constant secret surveillance and the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, cadres make a uh, comparison uh, between the performance of the uh, work of new people and the base people. Now, even tribal mistakes, such as uh, breaking plow or needle, were considered to be a serious mistake that uh, deserve a punishment. And as a result, new people are normally uh, punished, such as um, degraded treatment, mistreatment, and uh, even worse, the execution. <coughs> the issue of the uh, adaptation in accordance with the policy of the Communist Party of Cambodia, uh, the people continue to uh, disappear uh, from time to time without any reason. As for the uh, inflict of uh, fear and um, fear uh, with the people, uh, they encounter many difficult uh, and appalling uh, situations along the street. Uh, they were threatened uh, at gunpoint to leave. They witnessed people dying along the street. They witnessed a lone soldier being killed uh, along the street. So these are the situations that led to the uh, traumatic experience of the uh, civil parties and the victims. I believe that uh, if uh, they did not have any pre uh, differential treatment or uh, discriminating treatment, they, would, they should not have segregated people to live uh, differently between new people and the old people. And they would not, uh, they should have also uh, provided some uh, levy to the uh, new people who did not uh, get used to working in the rice field uh, and uh, they did not get used to uh, condition of life in the countryside at that time. I would like to uh, conclude my um, statement uh, now, and I would like to cede the floor, Mr. President, to my uh, colleague uh, from
from now. Mr. President, thank you, uh, Council. The time is now appropriate for lunch adjournment. Uh, the Chamber will adjourn now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Security guards are instructed to uh, bring Mr. Kilson Pond to the holding cell downstairs and have him return to this courtroom this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now adjourned. Thank you.